Why is that drawer open? Why is that part Why of this video? Why did you have to leave it open? Just close it, my fall any moment. That's not part of the video. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> we just had an argument and I didn't even know. Welcome to Jay's Way. Thank you very much for checking out this channel. Please hit like and subscribe. Jay is finally in Armenia again. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We were celebrating our one year of being together. That's why, that's why we have one in the background. Today, my fiance and I, we want to talk about uh, certain aspects of arguing within a relationship that, if done correctly and in advance, can really make those arguments less damaging. When it comes to learning about anything that I've discussed on any of these videos, there's so many different tools that I've learned from. And one of them we're going to be talking about today came from another YouTube uh, sensation. So the woman's name that does this is Esther Peril, and if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, but like I, like I said, we'll put a link below. Please go watch her video. <laughs> she talks about some crucial aspects of arguing within a relationship, and I'm going to let Aztec here bring those up. So, um... She was talking about fight reasons. She actually said it was very normal to have um, fights. She actually said it was um, needed. Not just that they're there, mm -hmm. but they're important and to have. And that there is always there is a cycle of uh, harmony, disharmony, and repair. And we always have to go through it. And it's important to repair after the disharmony uh, phase but the main thing uh, she she told that I liked was that there are three main uh, points in the root of the fight and first is uh, power and control second one is closeness and care and the third one is respect and recognition those are the reasons people argue I think what she said was they're not fighting about the way the kids are acting. They're not fighting about hanging up the towels. They're not fighting about where the shoes are, how much money you spent. So I'm going to bring up uh, another aspect towards the end of this video. Make sure that you watch towards the end. But before we do that, I really want to dissect these three um, reasons that people would have an argument. Power and control is going to be a, an aspect in a relationship where someone or both just think that they need to be the boss of everything and they or they believe that they have no power and no control. So that causes uh, contention in a relationship. So this has to be fair. Power and control has to be fair in a relationship to avoid these types of conflicts. So, um, Jay, what do you think closeness and care are about? I would say that closeness and care has to do with your respect for each other in regards to do you actually give them attention, love, affection, romance, and do you feel that you receive those things? Um, it, it says care, so clearly, do you care about your spouse, and do they feel cared about? And the last of the three elements that she brought up is respect and recognition. How would you explain that? That's uh, respect, uh, respecting each other, um, recognizing each other's differences. Fantastic, yes. And, um, just taking the person as they are, not trying to change them and not trying to change ourselves. Allowing each other to be who they are without manipulation, without codependency, without any other aspect of control. You just respect 
the person that you chose, you recognize who they are and you give them that freedom and flexibility to be the person that they are, okay? This is, that's what respect is. It's just letting them be who they are and, and, and being happy with that. When we argue, we focus on why we are arguing. You're talking about a subject, right? You're talking, you're, you're, you're upset because of some issue. So you do not transfer your frustration into the fact that you're having an argument. Because then you stop talking about your feelings and emotions that are making you upset and you start talking about the fact that I'm upset. So now you're arguing about the fact that you're arguing, which is completely counterproductive. Nothing gets done. You're simply arguing because you're arguing and that does nobody any good whatsoever. So you stay focused on why you are bothered, why you are upset. You might not be able to recognize very easily these three categories that we mentioned because typically you get mad about something like she did earlier with this drawer not being closed correctly. Right? <laughs> so talk about the drawer. And if you're able to recognize why that bothers you, maybe it's a control issue. I feel like it's drawer's fault that it was not open. The drawer's fault? Yeah. 100%. It's never my fault. I'm a, I'm a man. Like we should save our relationships and believe that it was the drawer's fault? Yes, it's the drawer's fault at all times. <laughs> In a relationship where only one person is uh, working on uh, trying to solve the problems and another one is more argumentative and likes to fight, uh, is that possible by knowing all these things to solve the problem all by yourself? Okay, so just like the video that she that we did together um, about how her and I met, and here's a picture of it right above my face. It's covering my face. You can see it? There. Um, she's now trapped me with a question. Okay, remember when you trapped me before? Now you're trapping me again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I really think anything's possible, but what you're doing is making the path much more difficult. Um, I do think that it's possible when there, when there are two people in a relationship and one of them is much more interested in, in trying to do things well, and the other one is just argumentative and doesn't care and doesn't want to deal with this stuff. They don't want to improve, right? I think that makes it very challenging. I don't want to say impossible, but I mean, it's really hard. And, but it, of course it's possible, of course it's possible, but it's just, it puts so much pain and heartache and stress on the person who's trying hard. And I don't, I just don't think that's fair. I think the best answer I can give you is that it's just not fair for the other person. The last element that we're gonna bring up about arguing in the least destructive way is preparation. Um, when you're upset, you are not yourself, okay? Something, you're emotionally weakened and there, it's really difficult for you to have a rational thought when you're heated about a specific subject. So I think it's extremely important to talk about these things in advance. Mm -hmm. So you both can have that rational thought process kind of come back to you when you've lost rational thinking. So you gotta prepare for it. This is, this is uh, I'm gonna come back to like fighting, okay? Uh, a boxer, for example, is going to be a much better boxer if he practices and prepares because he's literally building muscle memory skills. So if somebody tries to punch me, I'm gonna duck under that punch and I'm gonna be better at doing that if I don't try to do it for the first time when somebody's punching me. I should be practicing beforehand. So when we're having that argument, okay, and she's coming with these verbal blows, 
I need to be prepared to duck and weave and do the things that I'm supposed to do so that that argument doesn't grow to the next level. Uh, and of course, it goes the same way if I'm the one being the, the butthead and she's the one that needs to duck and weave. Um, but hopefully that analogy can make sense to some people. Um, <laughs> communication and relationship are hardest things um, ever, especially in a relationship. Arguments always have to be there. Uh, however, preparing for those and not thinking in our case it's never going to happen is good because to whatever you're prepared to speak you just said um, the chances that you'll get out of it with less damage less damage it, yeah, is uh, and something popped into my head while you were talking and that is if you believe that you're going to be in a relationship with no arguments and no issues and no problems you're wrong and when you find that out, it's going to hurt more. Okay, so you ha I really believe that you have to just accept the fact that these negative situations, and they might not be the negative situations that you've seen in your past with other people, with, but, but there's still going to be some sort of a negative situation. You don't give those things any extra power by believing they're not going to happen. Expect them to happen, prepare for them, and then you're ready. And like she was saying, you don't have as much damage because of it. We hope this was helpful. We thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. Again, like and subscribe. Share this with anybody that fights, you know, too much. Anybody that you think doesn't, you know, they, they, you know anybody that yells at each other, send this video to them because I want you to. Peace, love, and joy. That is Jay's way. Ha <laughs>